following the sequence of the lecture on the Ark of Noah, we are going today to extend the topic and refer this uh, Ark of Noah with Jonah and the whale and the coming of the Son of Man. In the previous lecture and uh, in many lectures that we have given in the Gnostic tradition, we always emphasize that uh, this doctrine really is uh, based on two sciences. The science of the tree of good and evil and the science of uh, the tree of life. And uh, we always emphasize that the Bible is strictly a book based on Kabbalah and alchemy. And uh, alchemy is related with the tree of knowledge of good and evil and Kabbalah with the tree of life. So that's why we always state that when symbolically the Bible is talking about wood, we have to think always that is always in direct relation with the tree of life or the tree of knowledge. Of course, there are other types of trees, symbolic trees related with other sciences, but uh, the base of all of them are always situated, related in relation with the tree of life and the tree of good and evil. That's why we stated in the previous lecture that the famous uh, Ark of Noah is related with the wood of the tree of knowledge, <coughs> which is that wood that the Bible calls coffer wood, which is a word, coffer, related with sulfur, that is a symbol of fire. In uh, Kabbalah, In Gnosis, we always study the three letters, Hebrew letters, related with the three elements. And uh, the first letter that we like always to show is the letter Shin. The letter Shin that, as you know, is that letter that symbolizes fire. The letter Shin is made of three letters, Vav, which sometimes is just like a straight vertical line. And uh, on top of those lines, three yods or yuds, which is just a spat, which symbolizes, of course, three flames. And we always state that the letter Shin is related with the first triangle of the tree of life, Keter Chokma Bina. But uh, we always, uh, and we can stand, st extend the, the letter to the very button of Malkut, and uh, to extend also the three letter Vavs, and then we will have the whole tree of life. Because as you know, the tree of life has three columns. 
And these three columns are related with uh, three primary forces, since at the very top of them you find Keter, Chokmah, and Binah. In the middle is Keter, in the right is Chokmah, and in the left is Binah. Those, we will say, are the three Yods upon or over the three Vavs, whose uh, base is the world of Malkut, which is precisely the, uh, the way that we have to work with. Also, remember that Malkut means kingdom, and that uh, when we refer to Malkut, the kingdom, we refer to the planet Earth, because Malkut, the kingdom, is related with the four kingdoms, the mineral kingdom, the plant kingdom, the animal kingdom, and the human kingdom. And uh, those four kingdoms are reflected in the human organism, in the human body, in the physical body. That's why when we refer to Malkut, we always refer to the physical body as well. You find, of course, these uh, kingdoms within you, and we explain about that in many lectures. So this kingdom of Malkut has a superior part, which is Yesod, that is called foundation. So Yesod is it's stated, it is superior part of the planet Earth or the superior part of the physical body. It refers as the vital body or the ethereal body. And this Yesod is symbolized by the letter Mem. The letter Mem, which is the letter with which we say in Hebrew, Maim, which means water. So the letter Mem is a symbol of water. That is very important to uh, understand because the whole Ark of Noah and the symbol of salvation that is written in the Bible, in the Old and New Testament, is related with the Kabbalah. The Kabbalah, as you know, is a science of numbers. And in Hebrew, every single letter is equal to a number. That's why we have to study the Hebrew letters that we already did. But here we are synthesizing in order to understand the message of uh, this Ark of Noah. Or Jonah and the whale. So... Yesod, of course, is referred to the ninth sphere and is at the very foundation or center of any sephira. That's why Yesod means foundation. If uh, we look, for instance, in the physical body where this vital force of Yesod is reflected, then we find that it is reflected in the sexual organs. And the vital force of the planet Earth, the four dimension called Yesod, is reflected in the oceans, or in the lakes, or in the rivers. That's why when you read in the Bible about a lake, about a river, or about the seas or oceans, immediately you have to associate that with Yesod. And if you refer to the human organism, and then, of course, have to be associated with the living waters that we have in our sexual organs. Because remember that from those waters is how that spirit that was hovering upon its surface was making the whole creation, as it is written in the book of Genesis. So always understand that when the, the Bible talks about water, 
is always related with the sexual energy. That's why in Kabbalah, this sexual water is called as uh, Shamayim. This uh, water is Shamayim are uh, fiery waters or waters related with fire. So, those are, of course, in relation with the sexual waters. These sexual waters are, of course, above and below. And this is something that we have to understand. Because in the book of Genesis, in the beginning, it is stated in the second day that the Ruach Elohim that was hovering on the face of the waters divided the waters from the waters the inferior from the superior in order to make the first firmament in Kabbalah that uh, symbol is represented in the letter Aleph that letter Aleph is of course the symbol of air and that is the other symbol in relation with the three main letters in Kabbalah. Shin, Mem, and Aleph. Aleph is air or is wind. Which is, of course, spirit. That's why when we talk about Aleph, wind, or spirit, we refer to those, uh, that Ruach Elohim. Ruach means spirit in Hebrew. Elohim means gods and goddesses. The spirits of the Elohim that was hovering in the beginning in the surface of the waters. And when it divided the waters from the waters, the first letter appears, the letter Aleph, which is a, a transversal Vav, letter Vav, transversal, which is united by two yods, one above and another below which are the symbol of the two superior waters, the superior waters and the inferior waters divided by the wind, which is a symbol of uh, Vav. As you know, the letter Vav in the human organism is represented in the spinal column. So here you find then the three main letters, Aleph, Air, Mem, Water, and Shin, Fire. By studying these three is how we proceed in the study of the Ark of Noah and the Tree of Life in order to understand the message. And uh, in the wood, we find, of course, the coffer wood that with which Noah made the Ark, we find the sulfur, coffer, that is in Hebrew, that's the, the, the meaning. And, uh, but the wood itself is the physical malkut, the physical body, as we said. That's why I repeat in the Popol Vuh, it is stated that the gods created man with wood. The Nawas also said that man, the gods created man with wood. But you have to understand that the wood that is talking is not this physical wood, but the symbolic wood of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, which is the sexual energy. And uh, that's why uh, we will say that when God says to, to Noah, make for thee, or make thee an ark, of, ho of gopher wood better if we translate this as follows and that will be more understandable when we study alchemy and Kabbalah make of thee an ark of gopher wood that means that you already are with the elements with which you can build the ark and you have to make of your physical body an ark. That's the message there. Make of thee. 
Because if you write make from for D, oh, for means that you have to make outside of you something else. But if you, you said make of D, you mean that you have to make of your own self an ark. And that's precisely the message in the Bible about the ark of Noah. As we explain that God is talking to Noah, which is the atom nous, that we always say is in the left ventricle of the heart. That atom nous is, of course, what the Bible calls in the New Testament the Son of Man. That's why we always state and repeat that the Son of Man and Noah are the same thing. And in order to prove what we are saying here, we are going to read for you a passage from Matthew, in which uh, Master Jesus is talking about Jonah and the Son of Man. Then, it says in Matthew 12, chapter 12, verse 38 to 40. Then certain of the scribes and of the Pharisees answered, saying, Master, we will see a sign from thee. But he answered and said unto them, An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given to it, but the sign of the prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the well's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. So here you see how Master Jesus tithes Jonah and the Son of Man. So of course, Jonah is a name that we should investigate because in Hebrew, in order to write the name of the prophet Jonah, you write it with uh, the following letters. Yod and Vav. Eo. The letter Yod, as you know, that symbolizes the first triangle, the head, Keter, and the letter Vav that represents the spinal column in which the son, the man, is created. Because the true man has, of course, seven bodies. Hesed, Geburah, Tiferet, Netzah, Hod, Yesod, and Malkut. Malkut, as you know, is the physical body. And within the physical body of the true man, you find that which in Kabbalah is called Seir Ampin. The Seir Ampin is precisely the true man. Seir and Bin. And this is uh, uh, being compound with six parts from Hesed to Jesod within the Ark. And of course, the whole Seir and Bin in Kabbalah is symbolized by the letter Vav that is united to the letter Yod which represents Keter. This Keter is the center of gravity of the first triangle. Keter, Chokma, and Bina represented in the letter Shin. So, that letter Shin of 
the three, three primary forces represented in that Vav and in that Yod, of course, is showing us that the Ser Ampin is that man that manifests the three primary forces of the universe. And these three primary forces of the universe are Keter, Chokmah, and Bina. The three primary forces that in Christianity are called Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And that in the, the Hindu pantheon are represented with the names of Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva. You find different names representing these uh, three primary forces that in Kabbalah, I repeat, are Keter, Chokmah, Bina, and are related with the letter Shin, as we are explaining. So here you find, as we explained, that the letter Shin are made by three letter Vavs, the letter Vav in in Hebrew, which is just a vertical line and represent the spinal column. And is a symbol of fire. So that's why in the name, you see there, in the name of the prophet Jonah in Hebrew, you find the first letter, Yod, and the second letter, Vav, because in Hebrew you don't find vowels. So Yod and Vav make the sound Eo or Yo, as is translated. And the next letters of the word or the word Jonah is the letter Nun, which is the letter N in Latin. And then the other letter is the letter He. This is how you, find, you write Yona. yona right? And in order to, to write the word Noah, you find that it's written also with the letter Nun and the letter He. It's only two letters to, for Noah. Because I repeat, the Hebrew alphabet has no vowels. So this is how Noah. So Noah and Jonah are similar in the sense that Jonah is explaining more about the work that we are explaining here. You see at the end of the word Jonah, you find Noah. And Jonah is precisely that prophet that is swallowed by a whale. Which is exactly the same symbol. But in different ways. Because when you study Kabbalah, you know that the whale of Jonah is indeed the physical body. And also is referred to the planet Earth. Because Malkut, the kingdom is the ark, is the whale, the physical body, and the planet Earth. You see all the symbols there that are hidden. So when you read about the prophet Jonah or the ark of Noah, then you are, of course, starting from the very top. And also... We are giving just here the basics in order for you to understand why we are explaining that the Ark of Noah is as we explain. In Kabbalah, we study four manifested worlds. In other words, the tree of life, which is a symbol of the being, manifests in four main worlds. The first is the world of Atziluth. That is the world, Atziluth, is the world of the archetypes. Atziluth. 
Atsilus. Where you find the very essence of God. And we associate that always with Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The world of the Logos. The second world is the world of Bria. And this world of Bria is in relation with the world of creation. The world of creation, that is a manifestation of Asilus. The third is the world of Yetzira. And this is how you find in Kabbalah. Now, the last world among the four is Asia. And here you find precisely the similitude of this word with the word Asia. Asia, the continent of Asia. That's why many writers that who do not know anything about Kabbalah, when they find the word in Hebrew, in other words, Asia, they think that they are talking about the continent of Asia. While Asia, according to Kabbalah, is in relation with Malkut. Yet Sira is in relation with this triangle, Netzah, Hod, and Yesod. And Bria is in relation with Hesed, Geburah, Tiferet, and Atziluth, as I said, with Keter, Chokmah, Binah. So those are the, the four, you know, each triangle represent each world. Atziluth, Bria, Yetzirah, and Asia, Malkut. So here you find that when a book of Revelation, for instance, says, go and write to the seven churches of Asia, it's referring to the planet uh, Earth, Malkut, or the physical body, which could be represented, of course, in any continent. But you don't know Kabbalah, you think that you're talking about seven churches or temples made of brick that are in, in, in Asia. And that's uh, it's wrong. It's not that. Even though, historical, there were those temples. But this is how the initiates or Kabbalists hide everything in order for only those who have eyes to see to understand or to, ha to have ears to, to hear to understand. So when you find here then that when you write the name, the holy name of God among, uh, in Kabbalah, which is written with four letters, Yod, He, Vav, He. This is how you write the name of God in Hebrew. Yod, He, Bar, He. The letter He is repeated. Which many Bibles translate as Yehovah or Yeve or Yod, Hava. Many, many ways to translate that name. We in Gnosticism, we like to say Yod, Hava. That's the real translation of that name, which in many Bibles are translated as Jehovah. Well, as you see, the holy name of God has four letters. And in Kabbalah we said, Yod represents the world of Atziluth. He represents the world of Bria. Vav, the world of Yetzirah. And He again, the world of Asia. So then, the world of Asia Malkut is He. Simple. This is when you are deep no, in, in Kabbalah. Because the whole uh, four worlds of Kabbalah are based on the holy name of God. Yod, He, Bab, He. And that's why we always say, there is one He above and one He below. And this is how we say it. Because Yod represents the masculine positive energy, and he, the feminine receptive energy of God above, yin yang. But below, the vav represents the man, as we explain, the true man with his bodies inside. 
And the He again represents Malkut, which is a woman. Or the feminine body of the woman. Or any feminine aspect in the physical plane is represented by He. Could be a woman, could be your mother, could be the sexual organs, which are feminine. Because according to Kabbalah, Adam is a brain and Eve is the sexual organs. That's why it is written that Chava, Eve, was the creator of the living, living beings, creator of all this life. We always come from our mother, which is Eve. But also we come from the seed, from the Eve of the sexual organs of our father. And all that is associated, you know, with the symbol of alchemy in order to understand and comprehend what is the Ark of Noah. Because in Noah, you find the letter He at the end. Hmm? And the letter Nun in the beginning. What is Nun? In the Old Testament, in the Bible, you find there is one prophet that is called Joshua, which means Jesus. The son of Nun. Joshua is that uh, uh, initiate that takes over after Moses dies or disappears. And is written, Joshua, the son of Nun. Or Jesus, the son of Nun. That is, Nun in Aramaic is uh, for fish. So, Nun always represents the fish. And that's why all Christians represented their Messiah as a fish. As you know, that's a symbol of the old Christianity. The ictus, the fish. And, of course, also a dolphin was a symbol of Christianity in the beginning. Because the noon... The fish represents the seed. Within the noon is hidden the Messiah, it says in Kabbalah. The Messiah, the, the heir of the throne of God. And here is precisely another symbol. Messiah is fire because it means anointed one. The one that is anointed with fire. That is the Messiah. And Nun is the father or mother of the Messiah. And still in Christianity, those women that are in monasteries are called nuns. N-U-N, nuns, a nun. Why? Because a nun is a symbol of that woman that delivers all her sexual energy to Jesus, to the Messiah. But in this case, that nun represents in the sperm, in the ovum. That's why every monk or every nun is in chastity. It means keeping the sexual energy. In order for the air through the throne to rise in their spinal column. Because the throne of God is the central nervous system of the physical body. The arc or the central nervous system of that arc or that physical body is the spinal column. It's called cerebrum, spinal nervous system. The air through the throne means that our energy, when it rises in the spinal column, takes the throne of God and commands the body. And that's precisely what we find. Why the letter Nun is in the work of Noah? Because that Nun is precisely the fish, the whale. That swallows Yona. Uh -huh. And now you are understanding what is that whale? What is that fish that was created according to the book of Genesis in the fifth day? The fifth day that is in relation with the fifth, with the Sephira Tifereth from below above, which is the human soul. So when we say that Jonah was swallowed by the whale, we are saying that Jonah was swallowed by the noon, that the letter noon. How is the soul 
going to follow or swallow by the letter Nun, the only way is by transmuting the energy. Because the letter Nun represents the sperm of the ovum. And that sperm in that ovum is in Malkut, is in the physical body. Is in He, as we said, Asia represents the letter He of Yod He Bar He. So we look at He, which is our physical body, which is our Nun in the sexual organs. So that is no Wa. But in order to perform that work, we had to do it with Yod and Bab. Yo Na. To be swallowed by the well means to enter into the ark. To enter into the mysteries that we are explaining here. So when Noah entered into the ark, unlike you right now, you are entering into the mysteries of your own body. Your own physicality. It's not like physically people think that Jonah was swallowed by a big fish. That big fish is the symbol of the sexual potency that everyone has in his physical body. But of course, united with the Yod and with the Vav of the Sephir of above. E, the letter Yod represented the first triangle. Vav represented the sixth Sephir of the true man. And you have there E, O. And then the letter Nun, which always is that fish that swims in the letter Mem. You see, letter Mem in the Bible, or in Hebrew, in Kabbalah, represents water. So the fish is in the waters. And we explain that Mem is in relation with Yasod. So when we said that Jonah was swallowed by the letter Nun, by the fish, by the whale. Obviously, that whale was swimming in Mem. Hmm? And that's why the Bible says that the great deluge, the great flood, was 40 days and 40 nights. Those 40 days, or that number 40, in Kabbalah, when you study the letters, as we said in the beginning, all the letters are associated with numbers. So any Kabbalist, when he sees a letter, sees a number immediately, and associate that with, with, with symbols. So the letter Mem is 40. So if we said that Yonah entered into the whale, we are saying that he entered into the letter He, as Eo, the Yod and Vav, working with God. Because Yonah is written was the son of Amitai, which is the truth. That's the word that means the truth, his own truth, my truth, Amitai, my truth, not yours, not somebody else's truth, my own truth, that's Amitai. So, Yonah was the son of Amitai, meaning that the whole work that we are going to read and study is of your own truth, your, your own God, your own inner self that you have to develop. You have to unite that to yourself, and then you enter into the whale, or you are swallowed by the whale, or by the ark, which is the same thing. And this is how you uh, understand why uh, Master Jesus says that this evil and adulterous generation, when he says evil and adulterous generation, is referring to those people that are sexually degenerated. Because in the, in, the, in the text that is translated, from which is it translated, sometimes it's this fornicator and adulterers, or this hard, hardom and adulterous generation. Sometimes they're really that evil. But uh, you know the translations of the Bible are sometimes uh, done in accordance to the ideology or beliefs of the translator. But here... Jesus says this hardom 
and adulterous generation is asking for a sign. Meaning that they're referring to us. Because we are sexually degenerated. We are fornicators. We are adulterers. In all the way. So, you ask for a sign. But Master Jesus says, but only one sign will be given unto it. Of this generation. And it's the sign of Jonah. Because as Jonah was three nights and three days within the belly of the whale, likewise the Son of Man will be in the center of the earth. And what is the center of the earth? The center of Malkut, which is He. It is very clear there saying that when Jonah was swallowed by the whale, well, was swallowed by the earth. And that Son of Man is the Atom Nus. I mean, the work that you do with your heart by controlling your sexual energy. That's the only sign that can give it unto you. If you start working with your sexual energy, with your atom news of your heart, and knowing how to handle that force, and then you will be free or liberated, saved from these polluted waters of this day and age. Why? Let me read another chapter. Matthew 24, verse 37 to 39. Master Jesus said, But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son man be. You see that? I told you that no one and the Son of Man are the same. And in the previous chapter, we said that Jonah and the Son of Man is associated as well. But here in this verse, Master Jesus is associating Noah and the Son of Man. Which I said is the Atomus. He says, as the day of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking. Marrying and giving in marriage. That's obvious. That is associated with sex. I mean, everybody's enjoying the sexual act. Like in this time, people are in the flood of sexual degeneration. Because the tides of this lustful generation is unbelievable. This is how it's written that God descended and saw that men multiply on the face of the earth and that they were degenerated. Only looking for, uh, for the flesh. And that's why we want to destroy it. And we said this humanity is really being destroyed by the waters of Noah. The waters of Noah are the superior waters that we need to bring down in order for us to change. Hmm? Because Noah is in relation with Tifereth in the heart. You see? The soul in the heart. The atom nous. Noah. You want to bring the waters of Noah into you in order to kill all your defects, vices and errors. But before you have to be in the ark first, you have to build the ark Make of thee an ark. And I explained in the previous lecture that is to build the gopher, which is the word, uh, gopher wood, which is precisely the wood of the tree of good and evil, the tree of knowledge. That's the wood of gopher, which is pure fire, with which you build a generation for you. You build the first son of Noah, which is Ham. The, which is represented in the left column of the tree of life in the astral body. And then Shem, which is letter with Netzah in the right column of the tree of life. And Japhet, which is Tifereth in the central column. All of them come from Yesod, from Mem, you see. That's the generation of, uh, of, John, of Noah. 
the three sons, the very foundation of the three columns of the tree of life, but you need to build inside. Because the whole ark is the whole tree of life that you have to have within, hmm? that you have to build. And that's why it is stated <coughs> that Noah entered into the ark with his three sons, the wives of uh, their son, uh, his sons, and his wife. But you don't hear any name there. What was the name of uh, the wife of Jonah? What was the name of the wives of uh, Shem, Ham, and Japheth? There's no names. Because the wife represents the sexual creative energy. This means that when Nus in the heart is working in you, that news, that Noah is doing it with his wife. And that wife is the letter He, the feminine aspect of Malkut, transmuting the Nun, the fish, into energy. That's Noah. And then, this is precisely how Noah is entering with his wife. That means that your atom nus the atom nus has to work with his wife. Hmm? I mean you can say, Oh, I have had to work with my heart because in my heart is the uh, Noah and I have to be good, etc. No. You have to work with the wife of Noah. Because Noah entered with his wife, and that wife is a sexual organ. But the wife of Noah, the sexual organ, is the one that procreates, that gives birth, you know what I mean, from Noah, from the atom nus, the internal solar body that we're explaining here, inside. Because that sexual organ, when it's not guided by nus, is of course fallen into the abyss of Klippoth. And, of course, that is the sinner Eve eating the fruit. That's why when Eve eats of the fruit of good and evil, she begats Cain. If you read the Bible, you say that she begat. It doesn't say that God begot Cain. No. She says, and she begat, meaning that she is the one that is creating that in Malkut. The sexual organ, when it's in the wrong use, is creating wrong things. But it's not God. It says, she is begotten Cain. She begot Cain. Which represents, of course, the outcome of fornication. The outcome of the orgasm, in other words. That was the falling of humanity, creating Cain. That polluted the psyche. That's Cain. In Abel, of course, is the other aspect, which is the outcome of Adam, the soul. And that's why in Kabbalah it is stated that after the fall, when we fell in this the generation in which we are in the beginning, Adam, the brain, was in sexual intercourse with two women. Nama and Lilith. And that we say it and thought, this Nama and Lilith are in relation with hell, with Klippoth. And this is how we enter. When we enter into this wisdom, into this knowledge, we enter as having sex with Nama and Lilith. Adam, the brain, with which we have the knowledge of this civilization, is always teaching us how to fornicate how to adulterate, which is Nama. How to be with prostitution, which is Nama. You see? We sometimes we say Nahema, but we say Nahema or Nama. It's the same thing. And Lilith is the worst. Lilith is a mother of homosexuality, lesbianism, incest, and all the sexual violence. So all of us, as 
represented in humanity are Mary, or having intercourse with Lilith and Naama. And that's precisely the Adam, the brain, that receives the consequences of sexual degeneration. But it's written that the earth has to give birth to his own kind. That the sexual organ has to give birth to his own kind. That kind, the, the, the same kind of the sexual energy is the atom nous. When you create generation of your own kind, means that you are creating according to your heart. Because when you don't create according to your own kind, that means that you are utilizing your sexual energy in the wrong way, you are committing adultery. And that's why adultery is always related to the woman, to the feminine aspect that represents the sexual organs. When you utilize your sexual organs in the wrong way, you are an adulteress. Adulteress to your own being. So that's the beginning of faithfulness. To be faithful is to be faithful to your own being. And when you are not faithful to your own being, that's the beginning of adultery. And of course, if you are an adulteress to your own being, you can be adulterous to anybody. That's why it's written that the wife has to give birth to his own kind, to his own being, Noah. And that's the meaning of the ark, to enter into the ark, or Jonah entering into the whale by doing the work of noon. And that's why Master Jesus says, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. Hmm? That means that before you know this knowledge, you are eating, drinking, as people say, let us eat and drink that tomorrow we will die. Let us fornicate, commit adultery, because we get old and we go to the grave, we have to enjoy life. Let us marry and get married. And all of those uh, people have that ideology, that idiosyncrasy in their minds. But when they receive the knowledge of Noah, or the sacred arcanum, the ark, the mystery of Jonah within the whale, and then until the day that Noah entered into the ark. Meaning what? You are degenerated until the moment in which you decide to work with your atom nous and to enter into the ark, to build your own ark, to make of thee an ark. And then you start making your own salvation. And that's precisely the, 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 the doctrine of Gnosis here. For us, to be saved is not to believe in anything. You can believe in what, whatever you want to believe. To be saved is to be saved by your own work. If you are not working with your own waters, with your own Noah, if that Eo, the Vav and Nun of your God, is not entering into the whale, you doesn't matter what you believe, you are not being saved. Because this is practical work, alchemical work. To be saved is something in order to open the, the doors to the Son of Man. Because the Son of Man is the one that helps us. And see how Jesus of Nazareth is associating the Son of Man with Jonah and the Son of Man with Noah. And he says that in the same way that in the, those days people enter into the ark, the same in this day and age. You have to enter into the mystery of the ark of Noah and the mystery of Jonah. And then it says after, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Mm -hmm. So everybody, of course, the fundamentalists are waiting for the Son of Man to come in the clouds. And they don't know that the cloud is a symbol of mystery. The son of man is this science that we are teaching here. The mystery of Kabbalah. 
This is how you enter into the mysteries and know how to work with your nous, with your Jonah within you, with your Noah, in order to make of thee an ark, and to be saved of this sexual degeneration. Not the sexual de degeneration that you see outside, because people always point outside. No, it's the sexual degeneration in which you are. Because if you inquired within your psyche, you find that sexual degeneration. We have that in our blood, or as we say in this day and age, in our DNA. And that's why Master Jesus says, if you don't hate your father, your mother, your sister, your brother, you are not worthy of me. It doesn't mean that you are going to hate your family. No. It means going into your side, into your psyche, the root of your fornication, adultery, and all that sexual degeneration is in your blood. It's in the marrow of your bones, in your DNA. And you have to fight against that. That is salvation. And for that you have to know how to build an ark with wood, with gopher wood. And you have to know the measures of that ark. That's why in the previous lecture we said that the length of that ark is 300 cubits. And when you study the letters, you find that the letter Shin has the value of 300. You say, oh, has to have the length of 300? Well, you're talking to me about the letter Shin, fire. And the fire, the flame of fire extends from Malkut to Keter. Those are the three flames, the three spinal I mean, the three columns, which could be represented also in the caduceus of Mercury. The caduceus of Mercury, you find three serpents. Somehow, in this day and age, with time, people change the serpent of the middle, which is the Kundalini, with a, with a caduceus, with a spine, with, just with a tube. But in the beginning, that Caduceus had three serpents. The one in the middle, and two entwined among the one in the middle. And the top of the Caduceus was the brain, of course. And that is a representation of Ida and Pingala of Hinduism. Which are entwined among the first serpent in the middle. That serpent that is in the middle is that serpent that healed the Israelites in the wilderness. The serpent that Moses was uh, teaching them to worship. The serpentine fire that rises in the spinal column. And Ida Pingala, or as we say in Taoism, Yin Yang, the two polarities that awake the center and that make the letter Shin. The letter Shin, of course, is all the length from Malkut to Keter. You see, Psst, that's the length of the arc. And of course, it's associated not only with that, but the three factors of the revolution of the consciousness, which Jesus says, whosoever wants to, call, uh, to come after me, deny himself. That's to work, of course. To deny oneself is to work with chokhmah. It is called the holy denying. When you affirm within you the will of God, that is to work with the holy denying. And you deny all the negativity that you have within, which pushes you to do the negative things, which is the ego. To deny yourself is to deny lust, anger, greed, pride, laziness, gluttony, envy. That's to deny yourself. Whosoever wants to, call, uh, to come after me, deny himself. Take his cross daily. The cross, as we were explaining in the previous lecture, is a union of two pieces of wood which represents the tree of good and evil. 
The tree with which the cross of Christ is made is with the tree of good and evil. Talking about the symbol of alchemy. The vertical is the phallus. The horizontal is the vagina. United in the sexual act, behold the cross that we have to take daily. But that's the cross of Christ. And that's why Christ is crucified in that cross. And Indri is the fire. Shin. Ignis natura renovator integra. The fire renews nature constantly. So by working daily in that cross of chastity is how Nus, the son of man, enters into the whale, into the ark. This is how the man enters into the woman. That's why in many uh, aspects we always said that salvation is in the woman and damnation is in the woman for the man, of course. Because when the man enters the woman, could be saved or could be damned. If he fornicates, he is victim of the tree of uh, good and evil and eats the apple or eats the forbidden fruit. But if he transmutes, he enters into the ark. You see the two ways? Whether you enter into the ark or whether you eat from the tree of good and evil and fall into cliffs. There are the two ways. Sex is a door into hell. Sex is the door into heaven. It depends how we use it. Fortunately, as you know, this humanity uses it in the wrong way. Well, we are degenerated. So that's the land of Shin, the fire, the sexual fire. And of course, I forgot, to follow Jesus is to work with Kater. Because to work with Bina, which is the sexual energy, the Holy Spirit, is to work with the cross daily. That's the work of Bina in the sex. To work with Chokhmah is to deny the desires of the heart. And to follow Christ is to do the will of God, Keter. That's, which that will is synthesized in the Ten Commandments, written by Moses. That we have to follow, study it. Not memorize it, but study it psychologically, alchemically. So deny himself, take up uh, daily his cross, and follow me. Those are the three factors of the letter Shin, of the three primary forces of the universe, of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And uh, the weed, as we said, of that ark is 50 uh, cubits. And of course, that is in relation with the letter Nun. Hmm? The weed, the Nun. Because between the man and the woman, this is how, you see, Noah and his wife, the three sons of Noah and their wives, because there are the two polarities. Noon was plain. It's a split. And two forces. The ovum and the sperm. The ovum is feminine. The sperm is, or, or the zoosperm is masculine. Those are the two symbols of noon. United is that the width. Fifty. In which you walk in the waters. Because in order to unite the noon from the left and the noon from the right, the woman and the man, you have to do it in Yesod. You have to do it in the waters. Because that fish swims in the waters of Shamayim. Mem. The letter Mem. That's why we stated that the whole work has to be performed in 40 years or 40 days. doesn't matter. The 40 symbolizes always the length of the work that you have to do with your sexual energy. Now you understand why Master Jesus was 40 days fasting in the wilderness and facing the devil or Lucifer in the wilderness because he was working with the waters. And that happened precisely after he was baptized in the waters of the river Jordan. Receiving that strength from men from the waters, he went into the wilderness and Lucifer appears there tempting him. 
The same happened with all of us. When we start working with our atom noose, in the sexual act, in the, in the mem, when we enter into the ark, into those 40 days, symbolic days, you will be tempted by the devil, by Lucifer, because the power of Lucifer is in the ninth sphere, in your God. If you read the Divine Comedy of Dante, you will find how Dante finds Lucifer in the ninth sphere, in Yosod, in the center of the earth. In other words, when you enter into the ark, you are swallowed by Lucifer, or by the Leviathan. The Leviathan, they say, is your own sexual potency. Lucifer is the symbol of the sexual potency, whether in a man or in a woman. And when you start working within the waters of Yesod, entering into the ark, you are working with Lucifer within the center. You go into the Sheol. And that's why you find that when Jonah is swallowed by the whale, he states in the book, I cry and pray to my God from the center, from the Sheol. The Sheol is hell. It's a nice fear. How come he's here in the Sheol? Go to, because the whale takes him to the very bottom of the abyss of the sea. You see how beautiful is the Bible? How beautiful is written? The well is noon. The sea is mem and yo are the two polarities. Man and woman in the ark. So when the sons of Noah and Noah are entering into the ark, they are there with their wives. That means that you have to be in chastity. That sexual energy has to be risen, not only in the physical body, but in the astral body, in the mental body, and in the causal body. All those wives, all those sexual forces of these three bodies, have to rise up into the spinal column. Because there are many fallen angels, as is written in the book of Genesis, that the children of God fell in love with women, and they fell into sin. This is how it's written. But when we enter into the ark, we don't have to do what the children of God did in the past. The children of God are those that build inside the three bodies. Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And that's why you find also that when Noah is coming out of the flood after doing all the alchemical work that is in symbols written in the Bible... He said that he became embriagated or inebriated with wine. He planted a wine, a, a vine of grapes. He made a wine and drank or drank it and became drunk. What is that? Here we enter another symbol. The wine of the transubstantiation is represented or symbol of the sexual alchemy or the transmutation. If you are not careful with your higher work, when you come out of the ark, or when Jonah is vomited by the whale, you see how Jonah was displeased with himself? And it says in the Bible that he was angry. Same happened with Noah. He, he, he got inebriated and displeased, of course. That means something psychological. But that desire that is hidden is still there within Noah or within the superior resurrected man is always associated with desire. And desire in Sanskrit is Kamarupa, body of desire, related with Hod, with the astral body, which is the youngest son of Noah which is Ham. That is the solar body. But if you are not careful of your behavior, that Ham can create through desire, if you don't control that emotional center, can create Canaan. And that Canaan precisely is the symbol of the serpent. 
the serpent of desire that was tempting Eve in the garden. The tempting serpent of the garden of Eden is Canaan. Or Esau. It had many symbols. This is in relation with your own body, with your own, with your, with your own development. So that's why when Noah is drunk, Ham sees it. In other words, his astral body, the body of desire, says, oh, ha. Huh. So I am now controlling my own father. Noah, in other words, is getting castrated spiritually. His own sexual force is not rising, but descending. That's called castration from the spirit. And because of that, it's descending through Ham, the body of desires, and creating Canaan. And that's why when the true other sons of Noah are protecting and awaking the father or the atom news and realizes what happened, he damned Canaan, the son of Ham, because he's already in him. He's alive. He says, damned be Canaan, the son of Ham. But this is a creation because of you lose your watch. You lose your observation, your attentiveness. And you are creating desire again. And that's why Canaan is precisely in the Bible related with all of those individuals that are slaves of desire. But Canaan is a symbol of the serpent, the tempting serpent of Eden in us. That Canaan is the ego within us. That Canaan was born in those children of God that were identified with the children of the daughters of men at that time. This is how the serpent works in you. So sexual energy, desire, or chastity. And that's why you find there why the miracle of transmutation of the water of men into the wine of the Spirit was made by Master Jesus and the weddings of Canaan. Because that miracle is always happening in us. We are the children of Canaan. Children of desire. Unfortunately, because we don't control the emotional center, the center of desire. But Jesus, the atom noose, which is in the left ventricle of the heart, starts making that transmutation, that transformation with your heart in the ark of Noah, in the belly of the, uh, the, belly of the whale, that atom noose, that Jonah, transmuting the water of Mem into wine of the spirit. That's a miracle of Jesus. Same symbol, hidden there in Canaan. Because we are fornicators, we are adulterers. We need that miracle. That's the beginning, as the Master Jesus said, the beginning of the entering into salvation. To transmute the waters into wine. But it's inside. It's not outside. Jesus didn't make miracles just for fun. Every single step and action that Master Jesus did and is written in the Gospels symbolizes something that we have to perform internally. This is why we have to understand. Not to believe in it. You can believe it or not believe it. It doesn't matter. If you don't do it in yourself, it's worthless. You have to do it. And that's what counts. Mem, Shin, and Aleph. And that's why it is written that the Bible says you have to make a window, you see, on top of your ark of one cubit. That's the measure of, of the window. One cubit. Well, when you say one cubit, well, number one. What is number one? Aleph is the number one. The wind, the spirit, represented by Keter. That Aleph, of course, is the symbol of the wind, of the chakra of the clairvoyance. Hmm? The Achna chakra. Hmm? 
They had to rotate clockwise. Not counterclockwise. Because there are many individuals that rotate that chakra counterclockwise, and that's negative. We have to rotate it clockwise. In the arc. That is the window of the arc. To that window can go through the Holy Spirit, the white dove. And listen, in Hebrew, dove is yona. Yona means dove in Hebrew. And the white dove of the Holy Spirit is a symbol of sexuality, of purity, chastity. Do you see that now? And of course it says that the ark has to have three stories. Yetzirah, Bria, and Asiluth. Because the ark itself is Asia. So the three stories are the three worlds that you are entering and developing because the whole tree of life has to be developed within you. And that's why they said that the height is 30. It's, uh, huh? 30 cubits, which which are pushing us to a study, the letter Lamed, which is the letter L among the Hebrews. This is how you find the letter Lamed in Hebrew. Meter by above, a calf going down into the abyss. Lamed. It is a symbol in which the letter Lamed, symbol of knowledge, that you understand the knowledge with your heart, means that the atom nous in the heart is receiving. You see? Let me do it here. The letter Nun is receiving here in the heart. The force of God. And down. Kaf is another letter that symbolizes the way in which Adam is receiving the strength from the heart. So Tifereth, which is the heart of the tree of life, receives the strength of God from Keter and beyond, which is represented by the letter Yod, which when you extend it is a letter Bav, a vertical line. That's why the letter Lamed is represented as a tower floating in the air. Meaning, going further from your head. So, that's the height. 30 cubits. Meaning that the whole work that you are doing has to be commanded by your God above. Your own Keter. 30 it's not a work that you want to do just by yourself. You have to be always remembering God. Remembering Keter, the Father who is in heaven. Because every one of us has his own individual, particular Keter. His own Father. That's why Master Jesus says, when you pray, pray like this. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. All of that prayer is in relation with the word that we are explaining here. So from that vav, from above, the letter Lamel comes the strength of God into your heart. First, passing through your brain and going to your heart, transforming your mind into a sensitive, intuitive, abstract mind. That's the height. Because only God can give you the stature the height that you need to acquire. And that's the height of the ark. And when you acquire all of that, you enter into the ark and you work with the ten sephiroth. Always in Malkut. That's the explanation. 
And this is how when you read the book of Jonah, which is a very short book, just two pages, you have to meditate in it. Everything that is written there is symbolic. When he said that Jonah entered into the ship, that ship is the physical body. It's the ark. It's very clear there. But no, uh, Jonah says, do this, go to Nineveh. And he says, no, I'm not going to Nineveh. He goes into a ship and goes to, other pl- to Tarsus. That ship is the, is, is the physical body. The same thing. You, as a soul, receives commandments from your monad above and says, my son, you are my soul. Go into Nineveh and pray. Do the work. And when you enter into Malkut, you forgot about that. You do your own will. Your own ship. So the ship symbolizes, that boat symbolizes your physical body and the life. The waters of life and you are there and wandering. But Jonah is there. That's why he says that Jonah entered into the very bottom of that ship. But then after that he's swallowed by another whale, which is a symbol of, of the same Malkut. So we are now, we will say, in a boat. But that should be the Ark of Noah, but it depends on us. You have to transform into a whale. It depends on us. It not depends on what you believe. It depends on what you do. Your actions. Sexually speaking. Intuitively speaking. You have to work with your three brains. The intellectual brain. The emotional brain. And the motor instinctual sexual brain. Those are the three brains. With which you have to work in order to enter into the ark. How you, enter, how, you, how you do it. With how you work with the letter Lamed. You see, the whole Ark of Noah, or Jonah within the whale, is associated with the Son of Man. This is how the days of the Son of Man will be, as is written in the Bible. As Noah and as Jonah. That's a symbol. Three days and three nights. This is a symbol of the whole work that we have to do. That you will find, of course, explained in other lectures, because if we start explaining the three days and three nights, I will give another lecture that will take maybe another couple of hours. So now just you can ask questions in order to extend more about this lecture. What was the, uh, the symbol for um, the animals that brought into the, uh, the ark? Two, two of each, I guess, would be... As we said in the previous lecture, the, what the symbol is the question about the animals that enter in couples, two and two and seven and seven. We said that when they are referring to two and two, they are referring, of course, to the two polarities, men and woman, feminine and masculine, united in mem. When you enter in the sexual act, you are starting to transmute your impurities. You transform lust into chastity, pride into humbleness. Humility, greed into uh, philanthropy, and all the defects, all those vices which are impure, has to be transformed. Those are the animals that we have within that we have to transform, and they have to enter into the ark because we have to extract from them, alchemically speaking, those positive values, knowledge, and the animals which are pure, which enter seven and seven are the superior aspects from Malkut above. Because I told you that the true human being has seven bodies. Physical, vital, astral, mental, causal, beautic, and atmic or spiritual. Those values have to enter as well because the whole tree of life has to enter into the ark, into the physical body. In order to make of that physical body a human being, a resurrected master, a reincarnated master, or a prophet, in other words. And you, you, need, you want to be a prophet? You want to be a saint? Well, you need to extract those positive values from your monad, which are seven aspects, which are in relation with the seven churches, which are in Asia, which are the seven chakras that you have to develop, and to place there the seven. Seven and seven, because seven represents the positive aspect of the man, 
and 70% the positive aspects of the woman in the ark. This is how you enter. Two and two from the impurities below, and seven and seven from the purities above. Do you have another question? This is, to me, is um, um, you say that in, in Hebrew there are no vowels. From what I know in Hebrew, um, um, the vowels are inc is included, like, 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 like the I and, and, and the I. And, you know, but that's what you're saying, but you had like, there's no like, little, little U sound and an E and O like that. So that's yeah, I understand. You are, uh, the question is that uh, the the... the Listening here, this listener is saying that uh, I said that there is no vowels in Hebrew, and that he says that uh, according to his studies, yeah. there are vowels represented by dots and lines. And I agree, this is it. But when I said that, I'm referring to the old Hebrew, because those lines and spots or dots were added after in order for the people to read it, how to know, right? Because before, when you read the originals from the scriptures, you don't find any lines, any spots, only the letters. And that's why the translators, although sometimes they don't know what they're reading, sometimes they can make other words and then try to find what. But, for instance, a transversal uh, line beneath the letter is, sounds A. The three dot A. The letter, uh, the, the, the dot in front of the letter is U, right? In the bottom, one dot is O. No, no, above is O. And the bottom is E. You see, it's, it's the contrary, because when we said E in the letter I, we put it the dot above, but in Hebrew it's below. And above is O. So what's why the letter Vav, for instance, which is the V, letter V, right, in English, it's used for vowels. If you put the dot on the, on the very belly of that vowel, is U. If you put it in the bottom, is E. If you put it on top, is O. Uh, in, in the letter H, for instance, when it's a line like that in the very bottom, is A ah sound. Sometimes it sounds A. Ah, no wa. You know what I mean? And this is precisely the point. Now, of course. Thanks to those dots and lines, uh, you can uh, read uh, uh, or to know the sound of the word. Mm -hmm. But even though, of course, uh, I am not saying that my pronunciation of Hebrew is perfect, because it's not. But at least I do the effort. Beseder? Uh, Another question? That's just like a, um, um, like like I know that the stories are are, are allegories, but I mean sometimes um, there are actual, you know, like like I know the stories is is exaggerated to a certain point, but was there actually an actual Jesus? Yeah, the question is, did uh, really Jesus existed? Right, right. The answer is yes, existed, exists, and will exist. Jesus is a great master. Is one of the highest monads or masters that came to this planet Earth. Mm -hmm. The true name of Master Jesus is Averamento. That's his sacred name, Averamento, because everyone has a name, you know. Averamento. Averamento. What does that mean? Well, that's the name uh, of his name. Right, uh, it might have a meaning, of course, because every name has a meaning. Right. But uh, to inquire about the meaning of the Master Jesus is a Paramarta Satya. What is a Paramarta Satya? Is an inhabitant of the Absolute, an inhabitant of Ain. He came from Ain to Malkut to teach us. You see that? Yeah. So he is a great being. Of course, 
When he was born 2,000 years ago, he was baptized with the name Jesus. Yeshua, which means Savior. Because he was going to bring the knowledge that was exclusive only for the Jews. He was going to give that knowledge for everybody. That was his mission. Not only to the Jews, but to everybody. Because the Jews, or the Hebrews in other words, were receiving different masters, monads, in different epochs, preparing the doctrine for the whole humanity. The problem is that when Jesus came and said, okay, this doctrine that the masters in the past brought to you, now is now the time in order to give it to everybody. Those people, the conservatives, But Jesus kept his message and brought the knowledge to the Gentiles. Means the Aryans. Because Arya means Gentile in Sanskrit. The Gentiles are all of us which were not involved in Kabbalah. To give everybody. And of course, Jesus himself represents the son of man. Jesus himself, as Noah and as Jonah, represent the son of man. That's why he says, someone higher than Noah and that than Moses and than Solomon and than Jonah is here because he is of course from the aim hmm? and he was teaching the same thing but in, the, in, in his own way right? so Jesus represents the internal individual particular Jesus Christ that we have to create and develop hmm? but unfortunately people misunderstood his message and they think that in order to be saved or to be transformed, as we explain here, it is enough of believing in, in him. You say, I believe in Jesus. You, you lift your arm aloft and you say, I believe in Jesus as my servant. This is it. That's a joke of very bad taste. And who started doing that thing? And it's because they were interpreting the Bible in the wrong way. And unfortunately, there are millions of people that think that because they believe in Jesus, they will be saved. No. It is good to study the Bible, but to practice, I mean, to practice it. To make it eat blood and flesh in you. And then the inner Jesus will develop in you. And that's precisely the message of the, of, of the Master. As you find other messages of other Masters. And of course, Master Jesus is an immortal Master. It's a resurrected Master. Still is alive. But of course, it's sad because this humanity didn't understand his, his, his message. As they didn't understand the message of the Ark of Noah, the great Manu Vaisvasvata. They didn't understand that. Still, they are interpreting the message of the Genesis of Noah in the literal way. There are people there that waste millions of dollars in order to find the Ark in the Mount Ararat. That ark never existed, physically speaking. That ark is a symbol of alchemy. And Ararat is a symbol of the top of the head. Make of your top of your head an ara, an altar. Do you have another question? The question is, is uh, well, this is uh, going to the Da Vinci Code, right? <laughs> that they said that the children of the royal blood of Jesus are now, etc. This is the royal blood of Jesus is the royal blood of, Nus, of Noah, the royal blood of Noah, when you transmute your sexual energy. That's the royal blood. You enrich your blood with solar forces. And the child that is going to be born in you is the son of man. That child, of course, will be equal to Jesus inside, according to your own level. That's the true genealogy of Jesus, internally speaking. In the physical world, who knows? He was a man also, and he could, ca could have children. But that is irrelevant. In this physical world, at the end, everybody dies and goes to the grave. So what's the big deal about that? Yeah. 
children things. That was, that was symbolic. Yeah, the children of Noah is a symbol. Right. Right? Mm-hmm. And you find that Jesus had brothers. This is a symbol. Right. His own mother is a symbol. But he, she existed. Right. She took the symbol of that in order to deliver the knowledge. Mm-hmm. Problem is that people think that Mary, the mother of Jesus, is the only Mary in the world. No, there are many Marys in heaven. Virgins. In the, the Incas, for instance, in South America, they had 10,000 virgins as a symbol in their pantheon. So everything is symbolic. And that's why we have to know how to read the Bible. If we read it literally, we fall, we fall into mistakes. Like Darwin. Darwin never understood Genesis, so therefore he created his own Bible, his own beliefs. And he says, oh, the men come from the ape. And there are many that follow that dogma. But they call themselves scientists. But they are also fanatics of the dogma of evolution. Because it's a dogma. Never you find a monkey that became a man. So anyhow, thank you very much. There's no more questions. And enjoy your weekend.